The patch conics propagation method can be used when a trajectory of a spacecraft enters and exits multiple bodies' sphere of influences, like the Voyager 2 spacecraft did. And in this video, we will be using Voyager 2's Earth to Jupiter to Saturn trajectory to walk through all the procedures, geometry, and software to model trajectories with patch conics. And if you stay till the end, I'll be showing all the updates to the GitHub repository from this video and show how to run the script to create the plot here on the left. This is the 43rd video in this series, and in this one, we'll be going over the patch conics method and how to implement propagation stop conditions for when a spacecraft enters and exits spheres of influence. And if you'd like to hear more about how interplanetary trajectories are designed, you can have a look at this episode of the Space Engineering Podcast, which I'll have a link in the description to. So let's start by defining what we mean by patch conics. And in this method of propagation can be used when a trajectory will spend time in multiple spheres of influence. And a common example are of interplanetary trajectories that use flybys and Earth-Moon trajectories. And the reason that we use the word patched is because multiple legs of the trajectory are connected at the edge of the sphere of influence, but each leg models the dynamics differently. And the word conics comes from the fact that any two-body trajectory is a conic section, a circle, ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola. And this is because in the patch conic method, we assume two-body dynamics. For the case of Voyager 2, this means that we can split up its trajectory by when it is performing a flyby, which is a hyperbolic orbit at some planet like Earth, Jupiter, or Saturn, and when Voyager 2 is in between planets, which is modeled as an elliptical heliocentric orbit. So for the diagram on the left, the blue here is the Earth, the sign is a trajectory when it is modeled as an elliptical heliocentric orbit, and the purple is when it's modeled as a hyperbolic Jupiter orbit. And the diagram on the right is a Jupiter flyby zoomed in with a wireframe representing Jupiter's sphere of influence. In order to be able to do this center switching from Sun to Jupiter, we have to calculate the relationship between these three vectors. The vector pointing from the Sun to the spacecraft, the vector pointing from the Sun to Jupiter, and the vector pointing from Jupiter to the spacecraft. And in this case, we know the vector from the sun to the spacecraft. That is what we are propagating in the heliocentric elliptical case. We know the vector from the sun to Jupiter. We get this from spice kernels. And from that, we can calculate the initial condition of the spacecraft with respect to Jupiter when it arrives at Jupiter's sphere of influence. And you can verify this vector equation here by just adding these vectors tip to tail. And on the bottom is a sneak peek of the implementation of this part of the procedure in Python, which we'll be going through later in this video. After Voyager 2 exits Jupiter's sphere of influence after the flyby, we then need to calculate the state of the spacecraft with respect to the solar system barycenter again. And again, here we do the same thing, except here we are solving for the vector of Sun 2 spacecraft. And again, you can verify this equation by summing the two vectors on the right tip to tail. So now if you go over to the GitHub repository, you can see that I've updated it. Well, right now it's just a branch right here, Orbital Mechanics with Python 43 Patch Conics, but I'll merge it into main after I'm done making this video. So if we go here, we go to SRC, Orbital Mechanics with Python 43 Patch Conics, we can see this Voyager 2 trajectory, which is a script that I use in order to make that plot of the Voyager going from Earth to Jupiter and out from Jupiter over to Saturn. Um, and I'll do all the explanation. I'm going to switch over to Sublime and explain the whole script here. So first, we'll go over how to run the script. So if you go to the base directory of the Astrodynamics with Python repository, you can go CD SRC, Orbital Mechanics with Python 43 Patch Conics, and then just say Python 3, Voyager 2 Traj.py. It'll propagate the trajectory and then come out with this plot here, where we have the Earth is in the blue here, the Voyager 2 spacecraft is in the cyan here until it gets to Jupiter's sphere of influence, where it is in the purple, and then back out when it reaches out of Jupiter's sphere of influence, back out to the cyan, and then here's Saturn over here. So now getting into the script, we have a bunch of the usual imports like spacecraft. Spice tools is a new one that I just added, which I'll show how it's used. Plotting tools and planetary data just to get the data from the sun and Jupiter. Spicy pie as usual, and then from NumPy import concatenate, it's just a small function that I'll show where it's used. And this part isn't too necessary, but if you do want to start using environment variables when using this repository, it's actually going to be super helpful because then you can run any scripts from any directory that you want. Um, I'll explain this more in a future video because I'm going to implement this method into the entirety of the repository. But for now, you don't really have to worry about this. You can run this script if as I showed before, you are in the Orbital Mechanics of Python 43 repository. 
And as usual, we furnish or load the spice kernels that we need, the time seconds or the leap seconds kernel. And then I put in a shortened version of DE432S into the repository that just covers from 1977 to 1983 because DE432S is a really big file and I didn't want to put all that onto GitHub. So you should still be able to run this with this. But again, you can add DE432S into the repository if you want on your local machine and then run whatever you want. And this is the initial time for the Voyager 2 SPK kernel, which is this kernel right here. It's called Voyager 2, all this stuff, which you can find here at the NASA website. And this is the initial state that I get from that. And again, I didn't want to post that BSP kernel just because it's really big. So I just got the initial state vector. So here initially we can just propagate from Earth this initial state vector until Voyager 2 exits Earth's sphere of influence, which we do like this. And this is a new stop condition that I added, exit SOI, which I'll be showing in a little bit, but just getting the general concept of what we're doing here, propagate until you exit Earth's sphere of influence here. Then after you do that, you want to calculate the spacecraft state with respect to the solar system barrier center since you're no longer in a hyperbolic Earth orbit. You are now in a heliocentric elliptical orbit at the ephemeris time for when the spacecraft left Earth's sphere of influence. So to do that, we need to know the state of the Earth, which we use by using SPK Geo. 399 is a spice ID of the Earth. The last ephemeris time, which is when the propagation stopped from the spacecraft. The frame, which we just defined for everything as ecliptic J2000 frame. And then zero is a body ID of the center, which is a solar system barrier center. That's ID zero. And we just have to index zero because this function returns two values and we just want the actual state vector. And then to calculate the state with respect to the sun, we just do the final state of the spacecraft when it ended with respect to Earth plus the state vector of the Earth. And then we get the initial state with respect to the solar system barrier center. And this is position and velocity here. So after we do that, we model the spacecraft again as a heliocentric elliptical orbit. And then we propagate until we enter Jupiter's sphere of influence. So again, we plug everything in here. And this time the stop condition is going to be that we're going to enter stop when you enter the sphere of influence of Jupiter. And then you want to make sure you set the central body as the sun because by default it's Earth. So you want to make sure that's the sun. And then once we reach Jupiter's sphere of influence, again, we want to calculate the spacecraft state with respect to Jupiter when the spacecraft reaches Jupiter's sphere of influence. So again, we're going to need the state of Jupiter with respect to the solar system barrier center. And five is the spice ID for Jupiter's barrier center in DE432S. We don't actually need Jupiter just for this type of analysis, like Jupiter itself, which would be 599. But in this case, this is going to work if we just use the barrier center. And again, in this case, we want to subtract Jupiter's state vector in order to get the state vector with respect to Jupiter. And again, now we model the spacecraft as a Jovi-centric hyperbolic orbit and propagate until we exit Jupiter's sphere of influence. Same thing here, using the stop condition that we're going to exit SOI. So once we exit the sphere of influence, this becomes true. Make sure you set the central body in this propagation to Jupiter. And then doing the same thing, we're going to calculate the spacecraft state with respect to the solar system barrier center. We need the state of Jupiter for that. And then we propagate again until we reach Saturn's sphere of influence. And that's kind of the procedure of how you would go about using this patch conics method. And now the rest here is going to be for plotting. So the first thing we have to do is to get all the ephemeris times into one NumPy array in order to be able to get all the positions of all the planets throughout this whole propagation. And we need to do this, get each one of the spacecraft ephemeris times because they don't all have the same time step as you'll notice here. So they're going to be different times. So we can't just create one lint space array. We have to get all the ephemeris times of each spacecraft instance. We want to get all the states of Jupiter or Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn using this calc ephemeris function, which I can show here in Spice Tools. And this is also added to the GitHub repository, again, because you can run everything fine. This is basically just a convenience wrapper for SPK EZR and SPK Geo, where to call calc ephemeris, you just need whatever target you have, which can be a string. So if it's a string, it's going to call SPK EZR. And if this target is an integer, it's going to call SPK Geo in a for loop like this. Again, not too important. It's just like a, a wrapper to get for multiple ephemeris times to get a bunch of different states. So we have that there, and then we just have a bunch of labels, colors that we need. And then ensure all the states are heliocentric because, again, some of them, like the first spacecraft, has the states with respect to the Earth. So we need to add the state vector in order to get it with respect to the solar system barrier center. And again, for ours two here. 
and then just plot orbits. We, I've shown this function before uh, in this repository, just passing in all the arrays of the positions and then a bunch of different arguments. And then this part, again, I explained here in the comment. Um, I just This is what I used to create the animation of this, but it's not very necessary because I haven't posted this orbital animator class yet. This is just on my personal repository on my computer. But just in case you were curious how to just make all this, create a bunch of dummy SCs, and then call the animate orbits function. And in order to implement the stop conditions, we have to update the spacecraft class, which again is done in the GitHub repository. And you can check the commit statements of the GitHub repository to see when I do each one. So we go to assign stop condition functions. We just need to add this exit sphere of influence and enter sphere of influence to the dictionary where it is pointing to the check exit SOI and check enter SOI methods. So if we go to check exit SOI, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just calculate the norm of the position vector, and if it's greater than the central body sphere of influence value, then stop the propagation. And the check enter SOI is a little bit more interesting because first we get the body. So whenever you pass in the stop condition, I'll put this side by side. When you pass in the stop condition to this Voyager 2 case, we say enter SOI of Jupiter. So you pass in the dictionary that describes Jupiter. So in this case, we're just grabbing that value. And then we want to calculate first the vector pointing from the central body, which in this case is the sun, to Jupiter. In this case, we're using SPK GPS because SPK GPS just gets the position, doesn't calculate the velocity, and we only need the position. So there's no need to calculate that velocity. So we don't need to use SPK Geo here. We can use SPK GPS. Pass in the body spice ID, the ephemeris time at which we want this position vector, whatever frame we're using, and then the spice ID of the central body, and then just index zero to get the actual just vector. Then we can calculate this the vector pointing from the spacecraft to the body as this value here, RCB to body, minus whatever the current position vector is. And if the norm of this vector, and notice this is a minus, so it can go either way. You could also go like this, and then do minus like that. It doesn't actually matter because of the fact that we're just taking the norm of that vector, so it can go either way. It doesn't the sign of the vector doesn't matter, it's just the norm of it. So if that norm is less than the body sphere of influence, so if it is less distance away to that body than the sphere of influence, then stop the propagation because you've entered that body sphere of influence. And that is how you implement these exit SOI and enter SOI methods. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be going over V-infinity matching, which is calculating interplanetary trajectories with flybys. So be sure to hit like and subscribe if you liked the video to stay up to date with all the new videos coming out and to help me out with YouTube algorithm. And again, in the next video, we will be doing the V-infinity. And if you want to take a look at this one, which is more exciting, basically this is a trajectory of Earth, Venus, Mars, Earth in about 1967, I think, somewhere around there, where basically if we refresh this, we start from Earth, we go on an outbound trajectory that's going to intercept with Venus here, getting a boost in heliocentric velocity to get all the way out to Mars out here. And again, another small boost to come around and come back to the Earth. And this method of V-infinity matching involves using Lambert's method and then using a secant method in order to iterate on the time of flight between the planets in order to solve Lambert's problem and to match the V-infinity going into a planet and out of a planet. And again, we'll be going way further into detail in this. It's pretty exciting. Exciting. Um, and I've, I thought it was really fun actually implementing all this software and learning all about it. So I'm excited to share that with you guys in the next video.